After removing the carburetor from the tractor and unthreading the main mixture jet, I am now ready to remove the top of the carburetor and the float from the bowl. So I'll start by taking this flathead screwdriver and gently unthreading each of these four screws. I don't want to take them out all the way. Take them out until they're about three or four rotations away from being completely out just so I unthread everything evenly and don't risk uh, messing up the threads or putting tension on the float causing it to dent or break in any way. Can you work in that? And this last one. Now that they're all finger tight, I can just unthread them by hand. There's one. three, and four. So now, if I've done my work correctly, this should be ready to come out. And let's see, the catching on? Nope, it's not. So you can see we have removed the float now. And what I'll want to do is close the throttle butterfly and place it upside down so that no pressure is being put on the float because we really want to avoid that at all costs. So here is the inside of the bowl. This is the main mixture jet that we unthreaded from this underside here. And you can see the bowl is for the most part clean but does have some uh, rust and oxidation in it. Um, You'll just a brief look at the top here. Look at it the right way. Um, so if this was sitting on the front of the tractor, you'll see that the fuel pump goes here. This is my idle, which is attached to the main throttle butterfly. And here's the idle mixture setting. Um, we will want to, once again, very gently uh, take this mixture screw out, which will uh, later be cleaned. Let's take that out. Oopsie daisies. Um, so now the next thing we want to do is kind of just give the give the whole carburetor a nice nice thorough cleaning. We we'll, don't want to use anything too abrasive like sandpaper or a uh, steel wool or a wire brush. I like to use carb cleaner or brake cleaner, which is essentially the same thing. It's an alcohol-based uh, chemical and um, just some paper towels so you know, nothing too nothing too fancy just a nice comprehensive spray here and uh, just a little bit of little bit of paper towel you kinda wanna conserve it because very quickly you can go through a roll or two trust me I know um, just kinda you know something as uh, delicate, relatively speaking, as a carburetor. You really want to keep the whole body clean and really keep it so that you can avoid it from getting any kind of dirt or grime or dust or anything in it that will ruin your hard work. So, you know, I've, I've, uh, I'm lucky to see now that this carburetor is fairly clean on the outside and all these, all four of these threads are looking pretty good. My main jet is uh, not dirty, so what I'll do is just um, once again spray a little bit of a little bit of brake cleaner because I have no carb cleaner at the moment. I just you know gently work this paper towel in around the the bottom of the bowl just to get any dirt particles out. And just a quick explanation of how something like this would work. We have 
our air intake here and you'll see this flat edge is uh, there's a little gap here where the circle would continue which allows the air to come in goes in through the filter down through here and the reason why it's called an updraft carburetor is because the air ent enters via this little hole at the bottom I'm not sure if you can see it I apologize again for my lack of professional camera but right where I'm sticking that screwdriver and um, and then that obviously mixes in the bowl with the gas and um, then gets shot into the motor via the uh, intake manifold which is the uh, 90 degree bent piece and then proceeds to get uh, lit on fire in the combusting chamber moving your piston and you know the rest is history so um, you know, very, very simple carburetor design, um, you know, once you get to understand it a little bit. And, uh, you know, so we'll put the float aside for just a minute. I mean, put the bowl and body aside and uh, turn our attention to the float. You'll see there is, there is a pretty fair amount of dirt and oxidation on this, this float here. So what we'll, what we'll do first is just unclip it from our our needle and then slide this little silver piece out with a nice little pair of screwdrivers and see if I can see if I can get that. If you can't, uh, a good thing to use would be if you can find a smaller screwdriver what you really want you can use something like a, a small tap even. Just Hold this little piece out here. It is a bit of a difficult little piece to work with. Once again, this is where you want to be very, very patient. Always use the right tool so that you don't jeopardize the well-being of what you're working on, because that's the last thing you want. And if you can't find anything small enough, what you'll want to do is use something to the extent of needle nose pliers and very simply and gently once again grab on and just gently gently work it out. This is being unusually difficult for such a simple little contraption. I'm not really sure why. There we go. Okay, so this is a very important piece, and we want to set it down a little bit. This is now very simply looking at the the bowl. You'll see lots of oxidation all over it. Something that appears to be a spot weld of some sort, or JB two-part cold weld. But uh, I'm not seeing any pinholes or anything like that. I'm just gonna spray a little brake cleaner on it to button it up and expose any holes that there may be. And I'm um, not seeing anything. I'm just seeing a slightly uh, oxidized bowl. So once again using brake cleaner and toxic paper towel we're just gonna very gently very thoroughly clean the bowl off like so and uh, if you can't get some of the oxidation off you know, don't worry about it because if it's been on there this long you know 41 years old or 39 or whatever it is then chances are it's not going to fall off and if it does you know I've spent I don't know 45 minutes taking this carburetor off so far so just keep working it, you know, give it one or two full cleanings, you know, just a gentle, gentle spraying of carb cleaner. And uh, just keep working it, you know. Even though it doesn't take that long to take these carbs off, you really want to do it once and do it right so that you're not, you know, spending weeks getting an engine running like I did with my own in. So that's 
that's looking fairly satisfactory to me. I think I've come to the realization that it's not going to get much better than that. And, uh, you know, given the way this engine runs, I'm not really too worried about it. So I'm going to put this back, make some space here, set this down on a piece of paper towel so that nothing, nothing bad can happen to it. And now we're going to remove the seat and the needle just by pulling it out. And uh, similarly to the float, you'll see that this needle, while, while oxidized, really isn't in that bad of condition. So with this, I'm not even going to bother cleaning it because I don't think it's really, really very necessary. I'll just give it a little, little dousing. And the same, same down there, just in case there is anything. Um, something else you want to do is uh, examine your gasket. Now this, this gasket looks to be original and uh, looks fairly clean. Um, not something to be concerned about. Um, you will notice though that the top of this carburetor is fairly oily, so we'll give that a uh, little spritzing of brake cleaner, which you'll see will instantly get this grime and guck off. And then the uh, last thing to do there is just take a take a bit of paper towel and just give it a nice little drying and pick up the dirt and, and if a little paint comes off the carburetor don't worry about it just because it's alcohol based and it's essentially a watered down lacquer or paint thinner and just get all your connections and everything like that so we're actually getting to the point where it's uh, close to time to reassemble the, the carburetor um, what we're going to want to do is take our brake cleaner or carb cleaner and um, spritz a little bit down here in the where the idle mixture is just to free free up that passage and then a little bit on the fuel inlet you'll see that the fuel inlet appears to be slightly dirty because there's a lot of uh, a lot of coming out of there but nonetheless, uh, you know, we have a fairly, fairly clean top of the carburetor now. Just give us a little bit of, a little bit of spray. Um, so we're going to start the reassembly by taking our float and our needle. And what you're going to want to do is, it's kind of a tricky little thing. Um, 